All right, kia ora everybody and welcome to episode 13 of Yarns with Beef and Matt, powered by LSKD. I'm Beef. I'm Matt and today we have the strongest man in CrossFit, uh, Mr. Royce Dunn. How are you, mate? Good, very good, thank you. Awesome, awesome. Um, how, we've already been over this off camera, but how's your morning been? Uh, really good. Uh, just uh, came in here to our gym, Torian, and uh, coached a couple classes. Um, sitting down with you guys now, and then um, do a little bit of training after. Yeah, how good, man. Sweet, sweet. Not too busy. Um, nah, good. I guess we'll kick it off. Bit of a family, man. Um, you've got three kids, yes? Uh, three kids and a fourth on the way, actually. Oh, awesome. Congrats. So good. Yeah, thank you. Was it... Um, Having a uh, Bailey and Marnie over, was it like having five? Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Bailey was like a big brother actually to the kids. They really took to him. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, awesome. They seem to um, have appreciated your experience and expertise leading up to the games this year. So um, yeah, but uh, I uh, guess we I'm could. Glad, I'm glad something in the rambling uh, <laughs> had some value. <laughs> yeah, we caught up with them the other day uh, at Partners League. And uh, yeah, nothing, yep. nothing but nice things to say about you, sir. Hundred oh, percent. That's good. Um, it just, took my bribe then. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, <yes. laughs> um, just before we get kick into sort of like your games career, we just wanted a bit of a background on you. So, young Roy Stun, growing up, talk us through it, bro. Um, I was born and raised here in Brisbane, uh, Queensland, Australia. So I've been kind of the same spot, different sides of Brisbane, but it's an awesome city and awesome area. So. Never had any any plan to leave, um, so I grew up here. My my dad is from Victoria, a uh, mm-hmm. different state in Australia though. So that's a big um, Australian football state, Aussie rules football. Right. Even though up here in Queensland, it's very much um, like rugby league. Mm. So um, because of that, we uh, like me and all my brothers and stuff. We all grew up playing uh, AFL. So played AFL all through school. Um, kind of just like loved, loved the team sport aspect of it, loved um, like everything you love about sport, like competition and, and you know, the physical challenge. Mm. Um, but as most people do, yeah, finish school and kind of fall out of sport because, um, you know, there's no organized sport for adults very much. And the, and the ones that do exist, it's really hard to get everyone on a schedule without getting, you know, blown yeah. out their knees or whatever as well. So, um, you know, sport kind of, you feel like it's over. And then, uh, then I kind of discovered CrossFit through a... a bit of a convoluted avenue kind of accidentally discovered it through some like people I was doing PT with at the time and uh, then kind of just mucked around with that because it was good training and as I discovered that had a sport involved that became kind of like the obsession and then the addiction and uh, a healthy addiction I like to think but um, that's kind of where it all all kind of took off yeah here we are here we are here we are Oh, you go, man. Oh, you were saying, um, no, no, you were saying this morning, 20, when was your first year doing? I've got 2013, 2013 on, but that's on your games, like profile, so. Yeah, that was, that was the first official open I ever yeah. did. Like, so I kind of started CrossFit like end of, uh, mid, mid of the year in 2012, by yeah. just like doing it at a normal gym, just like taking on workouts off main site. Yeah. And then, um. I kind of was, you know, seeing articles on the main site, seeing stuff that was coming up and um, they were doing a lot of games um, promotion, I guess, on, on CrossFit.com because it was you know, July, August, it was games time in 2012. And it was a big deal because some kid named Rich Froning yeah. had just won back-to-back titles, which um, they it was, a, it was a thing in CrossFit that no one should ever win the games twice because CrossFit's too varied and yeah. you never be that good at everything. And, um, and he won it twice. So I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Who's the, you know, what's the games? And I started watching YouTube videos with that a bigger rabbit hole. And then I realized, I kind of saw that the Open was coming up um, like soon, you know, it's like November, December now. I was like, oh, the Open's in a couple of months next year for the next year. Um, I should, I, I want to do it. I want to, I want to compete just not even for the actual sport, just to kind of see where I'm at. Just like, hey, you know, where do I rank in, in, in the world in Australia? Yeah. And um, the video submission guidelines were just a bit too intimidating, I guess. I didn't know anything about doing an online comp, right? The open itself is pretty new and I didn't want to have to film this workout or whatever. So I was like, I should find an affiliate. You can, you can do the workouts in a CrossFit gym, it says, and then you don't need a video. You don't need, um, like you yeah. just, a judge will certify you. Yeah. And so then I just started looking up affiliates and just wandered into one, like mm-hmm. literally on the first week of the first open workout, 13.1. And then from there, 
I got hooked on the actual affiliate atmosphere. Like just like everything that people love about CrossFit now was true back then. The community yeah. was awesome. People were friendly as heck. Um, coaching quality, like going from just doing these workouts in my like normal gym, like not knowing what the heck I was doing. Like didn't even know the scaling was a thing. I was doing everything RX, even if it took me like 40 minutes to do yeah. what would be considered an eight minute workout. I was basically doing CrossFit like bodybuilding, like doing it slow, sitting down like for rest between like yeah. sets. Yeah. You know, like didn't understand at all because I just saw the the three lines of print on the main side and yeah. said, okay, I'll just do those movements that many times. And so just everything about the affiliate got me hooked. Yeah, coaching, the coaching, the advice, um, the even just having all the cool different gear in there, you take for granted, um, like, you know, what's in a CrossFit gym, but like most Flobo gyms don't have plates you can drop. I mean, yep. they do now. The funny thing is a lot of gyms now are trying to be like CrossFit, but mm. back then you couldn't find plates you could drop. So like doing barbell slicing was so like mind blowing. Um, didn't have, you didn't see sleds in normal gyms. You wouldn't see like Atlas stones or D balls. So it was just uh, even pull up rigs. Like you would see a pull up bar. There's like machines that like, you know, people have in their garage with like a dip has like the dip, um, station and like the pull up bar and the little, um, thing you put your knees on to give you like assistance. Yeah, assistance like you yeah. have those at gyms, right? Like, yeah. or a cable machine, but you don't have like a pull up rig. We can do rig and bar muscle ups and ring dips and stuff. So mm. it was just. I got totally hooked on the affiliate um, experience of CrossFit. And that's when I started to really do CrossFit, I guess you could say, 13 onwards. Yep. Yeah. When was the first year you made the games? Um, that was in 2016 as a team. Okay. So our, uh, we, me and a few, uh, me and a few guys were, had aspirations of making it to regionals. Um, and actually CJ Walker was training with us at the time. And he was, uh, at this point, a multi-year regionals athlete. So we had a pretty good little training crew going on. And, um, but he wasn't training that hard that year. He had had some time off or something, had an injury at the, early, at the start of the year, I think, after 2015. So okay. he just, just missed the cut um, for regionals as an indie. And I also just missed the cut because I just had a few weaknesses still in the open. I couldn't quite, because it was open straight to regionals at that point. Yeah. And so we kind of accidentally qualified a team though. And we were like, let's just go as a team. It'll be fun anyway. Like, Mars, well, I don't want to, you know, don't want to just not do regionals. We'll go team, even though we weren't wanting to go team if that makes sense yeah but we we rocked up and put together a decent team and actually came fourth and qualified for the crossfit game so it was pretty insane yeah um what uh who was that for was that torian then or that, that was for torian yeah yeah have you always been with torian was that your first um, affiliate yeah I, I i went to an affiliate called it was called crossfit 189 it's a really local box um right. down like the south of brisbane mm-hmm. um and then I, I kind of moved north side so i switched to a, it was a gym called crossfit lift it's owned by mike towner who um is the touring pro one of the touring pro directors right the semi-final so that was his first gym but he started crossfit torian and kind of moved crossfit lift to become touring if that makes sense they're two different gyms but it's it's spiritually the same gym had all the same members and stuff and so i started coaching um with him like the day torian opened from 2015 whatever date it was i think it was um like a february or a march mm. in 2015 we opened torian and i was i was on the ground with him day one coaching so i've, yeah, I've been with torian since its inception how oh, good so you would have um torian pro I, uh, I don't think it was called that at the beginning was it but that no, started no, as yeah, so an it, affiliate. It was gym. Torian Pro from right. Yeah, so so Torian Pro started as um it was uh yeah end of 2015. Yeah. So Torian had been operating like you know, close to a year, but but obviously like I said we Mike had owned CrossFit Lear for like four or five years at that point, so it mm. felt like you know we're just running like a five year affiliate at this point, and um and Mike was just lamenting about the fact that like regionals are so awesome and like you know this is back in the day when I mean the semifinals are good now. But this is back in the day when regionals was like, if you had someone in your gym with one of those regional signs Mm -hmm. in a CrossFit regional in your name, you you were like a hero among men. You know what I mean? Like, um, (laughs) let alone to be a games athlete. So regionals were so was so cool. But even back then, it was it was uh, top forty, I think, or top forty five or something made regionals, and then that was it. Like, if you weren't in that number, your kind of season was just the open. And and Mike was like lamenting at how little opportunity there was in australia at that time for for you know the almost elite athletes not quite the tip of the spear but that middle ground of athletes that still treated it like a full-time job and still trained hard how little there was to do Mm. and um and benji from crossfit schwartz he just had like another kid at the time so he was he was 
announced that he wasn't going to run the shorts as challenge again. So it was, it was one of the bigger comps in Australia. It wasn't coming back the year, the next year. And it was just like, oh man, there's no one like running these big comps. And Mike goes to, to the other owner, Jono. He's like, you screw it. Why don't, why don't we be those guys? Why don't we run that, the big comp? Like, why are we always um, wishing someone else would do it? Why don't we just do it? And so they started the Torium Pro, they called it. And it was because uh, Mike's a huge golf fan. So everything that he names oh, cool. is like basically yeah. based on, on famous golf competitions. Yeah. <laughs> and so we, um, we got we the Torium Pro. It ran in the gym, in the affiliate, um, like, like just a local banger. But just even back then, if you go back and find some footage of, of the 2015 Torium Pro, we had Tia Claire Toomey competing. Yeah, yeah. She just came off the back of um, of coming second at the CrossFit Games in her first year. And it was, even back then, the level of professionalism, the effort that Mike put into it, like just the, the things he pulled off with just himself and a freaking like couple, you know, roll of police tape and at 3 a.m. at night, but that night before, like just mm. the setup was out of control. He, with a couple of volunteers, he moved every one of our weightlifting platforms out onto the floor in lanes. So we had this like snatch event to start the pro. Um, it was just insane. We had this shipping container in the gym and you put like a um, like a VIP viewing booth at the top of the shipping container with like SPs oh, and really? like, chairs. And people go, it was it was out of control. Like I don't think anyone had ever seen anything like this in the in the local banger context yeah and so that that was the touring pro and and they did it every year except for 2020 obviously with covid yes, yeah. um and that's why when it came time to you know when the sanctional era kind of fell flat a little bit like they just crossfit didn't give a lot of those competitions the resources they needed to, to succeed yep. when it when it came to rejig it for the semi-final era um touring pro was the first name on the list so if would you would you guys like to run the semi-final and that's how it became the semi-final, basically. Yeah, how so. good. So you've um, been with the Torium Pro in every iteration, I suppose. Um, I remember yeah. watching my first Torium Pro and the thing, it was on TV and it was um, in an arena. Have they always been at that tennis stadium when they moved from the gym? Is it straight there? From or? the gym, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. So 15, 16, 17, 18, all in the gym. Mm. And 2018 was pretty epic because um, just a little segue down memory lane. So 2018, uh, we didn't know at the time it was going to be the last year at the gym. Um, it was just business as usual. But we turn up and uh, Big Mikey, ever the ever the showman, he's got us all outside briefing outside the gym. There's a there's a couple of crates of weight vests, a weight vest for every athlete, male and female. Yeah. <laughs> then he walks us up the top of the uh, top of the street where he's got he's got chartered buses. I picked us up and drove oh, wow. all the athletes to Mount Cooper, which is like a, a famous like hiking kind of trail oh, here yeah. in Brizzy. Had us run. It's called the trail's called Powerful Owl. It's like two point seven k, two point six k, like vertical, like oh. straight up, like this destroyer of worlds. In this weight vest, we like this like kind of like done how they do um, how they actually do like trail racing, where you send like a heat of ten right. every one minute yeah. on those like staggers, and then like you just have kind of like the chip tells you like you know what stagger you are based on when you fit like when they when you started and um and so we hit this event it's like friggin you know destroys everyone but so mega like mm. this off-site like games level production over here and when we get to the top even just the small um details like instead of everyone having to walk back down to the buses he's had the buses pull up at the top so we finish the event we hand off our weight best to the volunteers yep. we sign off our scorecard and then we just get to get on the bus and drive back Hmm. And then, um, and then we had like a DT like out. In this, he built two arenas, so we had the an arena in the gym, and then he had this entire outdoor kind of rig and like arena built. And we're having like you move in like the games, like North Park and Coliseum. You move in between the two arenas for each event. It was out of control. And then 2019 was the year you're talking about. Yeah. We um, I, I I hit up Rich. At this point, I was I was a mayhem athlete. I'd been at the games in 2018. I, I knew Rich fairly well. I messaged him and said, hey, man, like the boys would love to have you come out for this, for the pro, like we're doing a pairs division. You got, you want to pair up, you and I can hit it as a pair, um, bring, you know, bring out Tasia and China, whatever. Mm. And Rich was like, yeah, let's do it. And so once we had confirmation that Rich was coming, Jono's like maybe like three or four months out of the event. He's like, he just turns to me and Mike, we're having coffee one day. He looks at us and, he just looks at us and goes, guys, we're, we're effed. He's like, we can only get like 600 people in the gym before it like breaches fire code. He goes, we we can't cap the spectators at six hundred when, nah, when Rich, Rich coming. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, he's like, we're gonna have to go find an arena, 
and they were like not at all like they hadn't resourced or prepped or like like it, the, the event was not at that level yet it was a enormous leap of faith they went and like yeah signed a deal to hire at the tennis center for like way more than they can afford and just all, all like they just they just basically went like all balls in like yeah and just back themselves and pulled it off and like you know they sold hustled hard to sell the tickets and just got it happening and like it was the birth of the pro as we know it now obviously because it mm. it like leaped forward the event like a couple of years ahead of like maybe the schedule the boys would have probably grown it at yeah. if they were playing a bit safer so it was like it was awesome it was a huge stretch for them like I don't think they slept for, for four months straight. They were just freaking out. Not just the logistics of the event, which obviously nearly nearly kills people every year trying to run an event, but also <laughs> like the the constant stress that like if it doesn't quite take off, this could be financial ruin. <laughs> and um, but but it was it was insane. It was amazing. It was like a phenomenal event. Um, it was obviously insane having Rich out here, and uh, that's basically the what what built the uh, the foundation for for the semi final now, which. I don't think it's controversial to say that the Touring Pro is the best semi-final. Like it's yeah. not even a comparison when you watch the the mm. ones from the US and Europe on TV. It's it's yeah. a joke. Yeah. Like, oh, well, yeah. not that they do a bad job. It's just insane. Like the Touring Pro is in a different caliber. Like the boys just they just do it well. You know, yeah. they do it right. Oh, 100 percent. Every guest that we've had on um, says the same thing. Uh, I think Bailey and Jake both said it's it's actually better than the games. Like um, as far as the atmosphere it, it, in a lot goes, of ways it is. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and to what it is now, I mean, we're lucky that we've been a couple times to um, Pat Rafter, and it's just insane. The environment yeah. in there is unreal. Yeah, hundred yeah. um, percent. That year, that um, twenty nineteen. So, what twenty nineteen was the first year touring, right? That was. I remember watching on TV, and there was an event. I think it was the individuals. And um, what stood out for me is because it wasn't like um, a, uh, a regional or sanctional, or it was. Um, it was an event, I can't remember, but there was like a, a photo finish and I remember them going to the screen. I was watching it on TV and I was like, this is really cool because normally they'd just go, oh, he won, you know, but like, they were really like analyzing it with this like, um, I don't know, they had all these cameras everywhere. So they're like, oh, we'll, we'll utilize those. And it was, uh, I reckon that was really cool. It like added to the atmosphere of the event. Like Brings no one knew who, who won it. And then they were like, yeah, that was really cool. And it, was that the same year they did... Was it the year after where they had the open workout as one of the events? Um, that was that year. It was yeah, that, that year. Was that year. Yeah. So we had, it was the year when they when they changed everything in CrossFit and decided there'd be a second open in 2019 and that yeah. open would actually be the 2020 open. We're going to have the open in November the year before yeah. so that everyone knows where they, where they rank before the season starts and blah, blah, blah. And so here's Mikey being like, oh no, what's going to happen here? They announced the date. Yep, of course, it's it's week five finishes yep. on the date of the pro, which is a massive kick in the nuts because like you're trying to, trying to get the top athletes in Australia to come and do this event, but they're all now worried about trying to get their open scores in, right? Yep. So Mark's like, screw it, we'll do the open workout. <clears throat> we'll do it on Friday. We'll have, we'll have uh, give every, everyone a volunteer to hold their camera for them. We'll have everything like done legit. They had judges there, like as in the Torium Pro judges, but like yeah. Mike had told them, don't like, just don't, uh, don't interfere with the athletes workout at all. Like let them do it with their own judge. Yeah. If they want to count a no rep as a no rep, let them, okay. because yeah. that's what you do in the open and the video will tell you later. Like, don't, don't be the reason someone doesn't qualify or whatever. Just stay out of the way. Yeah. Let everyone do their open workout. We'll just, we'll just give them a crowd of, you know, five thousand people to cheer for them, which will mm. obviously get you a pretty good, pretty good result yep. if you get everyone cheering <laughs> for you. And then the second kick of the nuts comes when they announce it's the first workout in history that you can choose your own yep. adventure. Yeah. So, so spectator-wise, just impossible to know what the heck's going on. So yep. complete stitch up. But it still was insanely awesome because when you go rich throwing and tear clad to me throwing down doing yep. it, it's people are gonna lose their mind no matter what. And um. So it was still, it's, they still pulled it off. They still did an epic job. They were running heats all day. Like cause you have all these community divisions doing the pro right at this point, like teams of four scaled and, mm -hmm. and beginner outside stuff. And they, these guys all have to be open, right? Every crossfitter in theory needs it to be yeah. open. So they're just running this event, like all, it was a logistical nightmare, but they pulled it off and it was so cool. It was the first scored event of the pro. Um, and which is, which is cool. Cause it yep. was like kind of having the, the CrossFit standardized workout before that was even a thing. Like this is years before we knew that would be a thing. And here it is like happening by accident. And um, then, yeah, I remember that workout you're talking about. It was the 
drag rope, double under, and overhead squat kind of race. Yeah. And yeah, they had um because chip timing is obviously insanely expensive to organize. Yeah, and I bet, like yeah. logist like running the the software on that is like really yeah. hard as well. So Mike was like, once again, taking the inspiration from other sports, he's like, you know what, we'll just have this, we'll have the, we're already paying for a broadcast, which as you guys said, it was on TV, which is also crazy. Yeah. Like what, how much money you have to spend to get a, a, an event. You saw it with the with the Masters and Adaptive this year at the games when they just put like a GoPro up. Yeah. Like it's actually <laughs> insane to have the production, have enough cameras to cover the action and also have someone or a team of people in a, in a truck outside managing the cameras and mm. moving from camera one to camera two and all this kind of thing. So it's a huge production. Well, they're like, well, we've already paid for all this. Let's just have a camera on the finish line and we'll do video review. Yeah. And yeah, like you said, they had that epic shot of like Mike and the judges like at the computer, yeah, like, right. you know, doing doing the, doing <laughs> yeah. the little rewind with the little, you know, the turn the, the knob as yeah. a professional, like, you know, go back frame by frame, like watching an NRL, like um, video ref, like, um, okay, we're just looking for contact here. Yeah. Does, yeah. He, does he get downward pressure? Like, you know, like it's like so good. I, I said to Mike, anything you were missing was he needed to be mic'd up like the, yeah. like the video ref, just so yeah. like, it was so cool. And um, yeah, like you said, just adds to like the the vibe of like these like guys like waiting to see who makes the next bracket, and like mm. it was just yes, yeah, so good. <laughs> yeah, unreal. Um, um, oh well, I think we'll bring it um, back to the present day. So you've um, competed at the games last month. Um, how was the games for you this year? Um, it was actually awesome. Um, this was like one of my favorite seasons of all time. Just the uh, just like the level of fitness that we had, the people, the experiences, um, just trading for for a common goal. Like we had, we had pretty lofty goals, as we said on a, on a lot of different uh, podcast interviews that we did, and that um, we obviously got nowhere near that goal. But I think people forget that, like it's it's the it's the chasing the goal that that makes like the everyday training feel so good. Like it was yeah. just we had committed to this big big goal, and just every day we'd turn up, like getting after it, like excited for like what we might achieve. And so um, we talked about this with, with a few like close friends and stuff, like despite the finish of the game being a bit disappointing, it's like every single moment up until then was like the best season we've ever done kind of thing. So it's so easy to retroactively like be disappointed, but actually that w it was still like one of our best years. And like, it was, it was such an awesome games. I mean, like the 5k run, I hated that like event. Like I hate running. I definitely hate running that hard for that long. But it was like one of my proudest career moments, like placing top five in a, in a running yeah, workout. Um, it was it was just like such an awesome like um, yeah, so many so many reasons why it was like one of the best years of my career yet. Yeah, um, I think just having a look at the surgery that Swanee had, Matt, he must have been in some pain, man. Like, yeah, it's it's a funny one. I, we maybe maybe Swanee's got a better idea now himself but like I, it's still a bit unclear exactly the timelines of the injuries I, i'm pretty confident i witnessed the actual moment when he tore mm. the ucl mm. it was um so i think the original injury was probably that common flexor tendon of his and it was like partially torn it was causing like everything to hurt a little bit like enough that it gets in your head yeah. and it was causing like instability in the few in movements and stuff and then when it came to that final shuttle run and snatch workout because it just wasn't not 100 normal and he was obviously playing in his head he's hit this this last snatch he hit mm. he it he went backwards and he like you know you might you might normally save it or whatever but because there's nothing in the elbow at this point it's like i watched it like almost like fold back he like like screamed like yeah. ah, drops the bar and then that was it and he was so cooked he could he couldn't even like snatch pull after mm. that and then it went to medical and they were like, yeah, you're, you're done. You're cool. So that was, yeah. I think that was literally the moment where it just all blew apart because the structure was already damaged. There's just nothing to like, yeah. there's no margin for error for him. So like one bad rep can just, yeah. you know, can, can break it. So uh, I, I suspect that was kind of like how it went down. Like started as, as what is technically not a major issue, but obviously it had all these like side effects. And that's like just created this perfect storm where it's, where it's just, you know, he ran out of body before we ran out of events, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's no. unfortunate. Um, I think the the lead up was great. Uh, watching that video on the Mayhem page, um, just watching all the stuff on the socials. Yeah, it looked like you guys were, were gelling really good. And talking to Marnie the other day, she says the same. She said, yeah, the, the games was a disappointment, but she's like, just the professionalism of the build up and that. And um, nah, I reckon I was saying to her, 
had it not been for that elbow, I mean, I want to say there's no way you wouldn't have been on that podium, to be fair. Easily one of the fittest teams out there. We watched it at Torian. We watched you guys take down Mayhem um, in that, uh, what did you guys call it? You had that simulation. like eight, oh, simulation, like yeah. a little, yeah, yeah, yeah. simulation, okay, yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, there were there were some awesome teams at the games for sure, and and the level is like at the games is always like you know it's superb. Like there's so many teams, like this mm. of the twenty of the thirty eight teams that turn up, at least fifteen of them could could all be podium teams for sure. Mm. Um, but like, I mean, yeah, to to your point, I agree. I thought we had a good, really good shot, and um, I think like events like the five k, I guess like um not not physically but just i think like um execution wise show the potential of what mm. what we were hoping to achieve with with most events if we had um if everyone was healthy yeah. um obviously like 5k running doesn't necessarily translate to moving a worm but um, i feel like yeah top five is kind of where where we belonged and trained for but um and i, and I like what i don't like what rich said on um one of the podcasts when they're talking about roman right mm one of the aspects of fitness is staying injury free yeah so you know injuries happen it's it's a sport thing like it, this is a sport injuries happen in every sport and there's there's nothing wrong with that per se it's just that like yeah we can't take anything away from the other teams we if we've been healthy things would have been different but we weren't healthy is the point yeah. and um i think we'll forget that too like even with roman it's like yeah it, it sucks but yeah everyone else managed to stay injury free too so yeah. they they got the placing they deserve so um it's just it's just lessons like it's the whole like you win or you learn so um there's always something more you could do you know no one plans on a freak a- freak accident or freak injury obviously mm. but it's kind of like you know they say you're not a good driver until you have your first crash like you, you probably probably wouldn't have given much thought to injuries derailing a team until it happens and now mm. it's like okay well how, what can we do better next year how can we protect the team a bit more checking with each other is everyone you know, even if you're growing individual most people probably don't think about themselves getting injured, but it can happen. And so you just, there are things you can do, whatever, you know, small 1% difference you can make. Yeah, It's just a good reminder to, yeah, make sure you just address that stuff. Yeah, I think Ricky, Ricky Garrard could um, attest to that. Just don't go mountain biking. <laughs> 100%, 100%, yeah. Um, exactly, yeah. It, it, there's, there's a risk reward with everything, right? Like he even said, he's like, it's, it's not a jump I haven't done before and blah, 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 but it's like, if he knew if someone had told him you were going to you're going to hurt your shoulder if you hit this jump he obviously yeah. wouldn't have done it you know what i mean so it's like you got you got to risk reward you got to live your life and have fun too but you know you also got to when you get close to the season or when it, when it, when there's a chance you can hurt yourself it's like save that kind of stuff when you when you retire if you like if you want to bike ride for fitness stick to like cross country trails you know what i mean i'm sure he knows that now yeah. obviously but it's like yeah you don't think about it until it happens because mm. yeah no one plans for disaster Oh, 100%, man. I think that's a good... Um, are we looking at teams again next year for you? It's it's really hard to say so early. Um, it's the it's question, I guess, everyone wants to you know, <laughs> get asked that question probably 10 times a day, just from like members of the gym and stuff as well. And um, it's it's really hard to say. Like, we don't want to... None of us want to make a decision too rashly, I guess, yeah. um, because, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's not um, a big commitment, I guess, technically, but just like we we're talking about before, like in terms of like the the training for a goal and the difference that makes, like it it's if you commit to something, you you obviously want to go all in on it, and um and it does make a big difference, I guess, like to the psychology and the emotion of the training. So we want to make sure that like if we're if we're opting in for team or if we're opting out, there's no like buyer's remorse in a few months when you're like, damn, I told these guys I go team and I actually realize I don't want to, so now I've got to but, I, but I've committed to them, so now I'm going to try and like half ass this training and pretend I care yeah. or other way around, you know, you opt out to go, yeah, it's an end of year. So I'm going to go on my own and then get, get massive FOMO and be like, crap, I should have gone team. Like I'm yeah. not, I, I don't want this enough because if you don't have the passion, then you're obviously not going to be probably going to perform very well that season. Yeah. So it's, um, it's really important. We get our heads right and make the decision, like, you know, be a hundred percent either way. Yeah. Yeah. Fair so point. we're just, we're just giving it time. We're just like, we're just letting it settle. Yeah. Um, is going back to the games, like, whether it's into your team that's that's set in stone or is that still even up in the air for you that that's that's 100 the goal yeah, yeah yeah the goal is to be at the crossfit games in 2024 um 
and like like to your point, like set in stone, I guess, but I wouldn't use that phrase because it's so competitive in in the region now. Yes, yeah. Our region's so competitive because of how much they've squeezed us with the spots. So it's uh, nothing's ever a certainty. Do you know what I mean? We've got some darn good boys in the in the uh yeah. in the region. So going back as an indie would be the goal. If I went if I went indie, I'd be going for the games. I wouldn't be just going to have fun at the pro. Um, but it's just like, you know out of respect to the, to the current guys, I couldn't possibly say it's a, a guarantee because everyone's just so damn good. It would yeah. be definitely a fight. And that's what you want. You want it. You don't want to earn your spot because you, the region sucks. You want to have it be the fight of your life and like, you know, prove yourself worthy of the, of the, yeah. of the title games athlete. So, yeah. I oh, just looked at the tour in this year. You had, you didn't have yourself, um, Ricky or Beto and still, stacked like just anyone's game and then you throw you three back in the mix it's like it's such an exciting region and i really hope you guys get more spots i really really do i think this region deserves a lot better but i suppose it goes off there how many people enter the open and that kind of stuff so Mm. yeah there's there's so many variables It's, it's a hard it's a hard um position to be in with crossfit i guess it's the same conundrum they have in olympic sports right like there's it's the it's the merit versus representation and you have to have a balance of the two um but you like you if you don't represent some regions they'll never grow they'll never be good Mm -hmm. but um but you also you know need to reward the regions that are performing even if those regions have smaller numbers of signups than other regions like you can't Mm -hmm. you know like obviously the sport was born in america there's a lot of interest in america and a lot of a lot of good performers there but i would argue and the argument's been made by by smarter people than me that the, the depth of field isn't what people think it is in the states versus um, like the outlying regions, mm-hmm. especially as a percentage of the spots we get. Yeah. Like there might be a lot better athletes down to thirtieth in America than there are here, but like our top ten athletes, I wager, are better than mm-hmm. the American top twenty athletes, and our spots are less than half that. So th- just the ratios don't quite add up. Is my point? Like. Um, if I was in an American region, I'd be very confident with coming 12th or better in a field mm-hmm. of 60. That might be arrogant of me to say, but I just would like those odds better than being one of the 30 guys in Australia gaining for three spots. That yeah. that just already sounds harder, let yeah. alone when you actually look at the results and the placings. Like, And I think even worse on the female side, I think like a Maddie Sturt, I don't think there's a single region she wouldn't have qualified out of except Australia. Yeah. And um and she she had a damn near perfect weekend and mm. it still wasn't good enough. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So it's 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 insane. And that's without, you know, a couple of big hitters again, you know, like Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 If, if Tia come if T if and when Tia and Kara come back, mm. it's it's like ridiculous. Like you I would love to have someone run the numbers of like all the other games athletes outside Australia just to see how many of them wouldn't qualify out of our region if yeah. they had to go against our girls. Do you know what I mean? Oh, 100%. And I'll, I won't tiptoe it around as much. Um, and I said it on another episode, no region deserves, and I mean that, no no region deserves 12 spots. Like, it is a cutthroat sport. You're there to compete. If you're not good enough, you're not good enough. Like, it's professional sport. I'm sorry. But that's my opinion. No region deserves 12 <laughs> spots when you've got other regions yeah. like ours that are so stacked getting three. It It is crazy when they have them. I mean, the, the, the argument is 12 spots because there's 60 athletes. But if you invited another 30 Australians to the Torium Pro and made yeah. it 60, our 60th person would not be any worse than the 60th American. <laughs> yeah. So so all you're doing is just giving Americans more spots. And, and that's... They, that's the bias. Unfortunately, it's an American sport owned by Americans that are based out of America. Even if you just like print the list of names from the semifinal, like you just know the names of the Americans more. Do you know what I mean? Like they, uh, Bailey and Jay beat most of the American field, but people probably still don't know their names as much as like a Justin Medeiros and yeah. Bailey beat him. Like, do you know what I mean? Like it's just um, American centric and that's just how it is for a little while. And, and hopefully that changes slowly. Like, you know, having the fact that there hasn't been an American woman on the top of the podium for like eight years now is like it, yeah. the point's being made that there's that it's not just um, like the talent isn't all in America, what they think. Like the yeah. talent depth isn't as much as they think in America. And um, I really like what Rich was saying on one of his podcasts, which is like just make the field bigger. 
because because yeah. Angela was saying like, oh, we should we should probably take two spots from this region and give it to. And Rich goes, or oh, don't. He's like, mm. why don't we just invite forty to the games? Why don't you yeah. just invite fifty to the CrossFit games? Like, you know, run bigger heats or or like have the schedule overlap a little bit. Like, you figure it out. Like, yeah, run just just bring more athletes. Like, why is the net so tight? And there's probably they've got you know they've they've trial and error different sizes of fields and they've they've kind of figured out a good you know a good number, mm. um, which is which is forty I, I believe, but it could be more. It could be fifty. Yeah, you know, it could be give just give five more squads or three more squads to Australia, give two more to to Brazil, like whatever. So there, there's more options on the table, I think, than what what CrossFit are willing to commit to at the moment. But it is a hard position for them to try to make this whole whole song and dance work. So um, just keep being the squeaky wheel, I guess, and hopefully we get some oil. Just keep oh. bringing it up. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't. Yeah. Um, I guess there's no there's no questioning you're a brilliant addition to a CrossFit Games team, but to bring it back to you uh, more individually, um, I personally have seen you compete three times in person, multiple times uh, on the TV and whatnot, but um, there's no doubt that you are a high-performing athlete or a high-performing person in general. I mean, you've already been up coaching 7am where um, Royce is joining us from. But um, where where does that drive come from where is that just next level come from for you um as, as cliche as it sounds it, it's honestly probably just because it, it's something that i'm passionate about mm-hmm. which I, I think a lot of people miss in in sports in general is um i remember so mike uh, mike tanner again he was so he was my first coach right obviously when i first started training here he was like my mentor in a lot of ways and um he himself has competed a little bit back in the good old days. He was at um, the first ever sectional mm-hmm. when that was a wow. thing here in yeah. Brisbane. Sure. And yeah. Um, yeah, he's old school. He's been around. And um, and also just to, as, a, as himself being a huge fan of sports and sports psychology, he's given me a lot of pearls over the years. One of the best ones was it was, it was more of like a coach advice and talking about just the athletes we see come through our gym who, who want to be, want to go to regionals, want to go to semifinals, want to make the games. And, and they kind of have like a two year life where they, if it doesn't happen quick enough or, or if it's a little bit harder than they think or like it's, it's hard to juggle a job and a family and training and things just burn out and, and the dream kind of dies. And Mike said, was saying like, it's so funny in normal sports, you, like a six-year-old who's playing like um, touch footy or like, you know, junior rugby, does they might like wear a Broncos jersey and go watch the game and like be a fan of the sport. But they're, a six-year-old doesn't get up in the morning like, motivated by i want to be signed by the broncos one day mm. like they they play the sport because it's fun because mm. they love seeing their mates and mucking around and they and they're not thinking about like what they have to achieve they just play mm. and then one day when they're maybe 14 or 15 they make a state selection or they start becoming they start getting scouted and someone goes hey you're really good you could i, w- I want to draft you for the preseason team and then we, we get you bulk up a little bit and maybe we can see if your skills can sharpen up and you might be a starter and it, and it kind of there's a progression and in CrossFit, because we're all adults when we start generally, we come in thinking we have to do it to achieve something instead of just play it like a kid. Because if you're only like two or three years in a CrossFit, you're basically doing peewee CrossFit. Yeah. Play it like a kid, enjoy it, like just love it for what it is. And if you love it enough that you that you are willing to do it a lot, you'll probably get good at it. Like practicing anything, like practicing an instrument you'll probably get somewhat good. Mm. And when you can get somewhat good, you can maybe refine it and potentially get really good. Yeah. And then if you're lucky, and if the genetics go your way, and if and if you know, a lot of other factors that go into a success, obviously, you might even be elite at it one day, right? Mm. But there is, there's a lot more factors than just hard work to be like in the top, you know, 40 in the world, obviously. But the, the fact is the way to get there is not to to have expectation of yourself and stress the whole way and then quit if you don't meet your own expectations that are based on judgments that don't even make sense because you don't know the sport yet versus just do it because you love it and i say to people all the time like i i trained a, about this hard when i sucked at it because yeah. i liked it yeah and long after i retire i'll probably still train this hard not as much obviously but i'll probably still train this hard because i did it before i was good i'm going to do it after, long after I'm good too. It's it's not. Yeah. Um, I don't do it because I'm good. I'm good because I do it, and that's kind of the um, yeah, that's, that's kind awesome. of the secret, I guess. Like when you're in a workout that you don't want to push very hard because it sucks, 
I just remind myself that, well, actually, I, in a weird way, I kind of love this. Like, we love it. We love the feeling of finishing the workout that was like, like that 5K suck. I hated it. <laughs> but the, but the, the instant we crossed the finish line, that overwhelming feeling of like, of achievement and like pride, that's what it's all about. That's why you hang on for that third lap of the, of the loop when you mm. just want, or all I wanted to say, I wanted to say out loud to my teammates, we got to slow down. I was thinking about saying it for the whole third lap but yeah, right. another team was too close to us and i knew if i said it out loud they'd hear us and they'd know that they could beat us so i just kept my mouth shut and just let them pull me yeah and uh, and i'm glad i did because then we came fit mm. and um and that's yeah that's the secret is you just gotta love it because every every professional who plays their sport every cricketer every every football player they love the sport obviously mm. If they love the different sport more, they'd probably go play that <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and get really good at that. Mm. So um, people just need to, to learn to love it, which is all the days and hours in the gym that you have to learn to love, not the three seconds on the podium or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a brilliant answer. And you, and even it's evident from earlier how you first walked into a CrossFit gym that, that affiliate vibe, it's more than just trying to podium at the games. It's the social aspect. It's, it's being around like-minded people getting after it. So yeah, I, I love that. Yeah. I think it shows to a lot of, um, a lot of elite athletes you see now, like, um, Bailey Amani coming over doing partners league. Uh, you see Ellie and Justin doing some stuff over in America. Like you all love the sport. Um, and the giving back is, is really good to see as well and it shows that um you know you guys love crossfit um go and do more affiliate level competitions um on the off season which is which is awesome to see mm. yeah definitely yeah <coughs> which brings us on to you'll be in new zealand shortly won't you i'm hearing very shortly um what's, when are we in wellington what's the day 27th, 27th of of September, yeah, twenty seventh of September is yeah. our next foray to the. It's a two day, I think. To the land of the. Yeah, two day. Yeah, yeah. so we're yeah Saturday, all Saturday, and then Sunday morning. Yeah. Awesome, man. Team of Ooh. three. Yeah. Uh, who's in the team for that? <clears throat> uh, it's me, Bailey, and James Newbury. Oh, what a team! Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it'll be, it'll be... <laughs> well, that's trouble. Have some fun. Yeah. 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 I think we're trying to get down for that but wellington's ages away so we'll see yeah it's probably longer for you but <laughs> <laughs> well, well no i don't think it is i think it's only a two-hour flight yeah. it's like it's real close yeah it's real nice. nice well it'd be a six-hour drive <laughs> or a 90-minute flight yeah so oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's a it's a real quick flight i've most of I've only, I've only been to auckland and christchurch so far but both both of those flights are, are really short like crazy yeah. short yeah I think we um, um we for, for considering it's an international flight, it's like so easy. Yeah, well, it's the. I mean, you guys are just east East Island, uh, yeah. Stone Exactly. Island, yeah, yeah. West That's Island, New Zealand. Yeah. So. Yeah, the West Island. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Got my geographics right. Um, <laughs> we we actually bumped into you in um in Auckland at that Redemption Comp. Uh, we oh, were we were doing the pairs together because we saw that you and James were coming. And we're like, fuck yeah, and we're like, nah, we'll, we'll just enter a team. We did the pairs version, <laughs> um, just yep. to come and watch you guys. So yeah, I think yeah, we we bumped into you there, had a bit of a yarn. It was good. I'm sure you remember one of your highlights. I <laughs> 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 is, uh, is actually that's um Auckland that uh, that comp is where where Bailey and I uh, probably became friends. Yeah. Um, until uh, until that event, Bailey actually hated me. Oh right! I, um, <laughs> wow. Not not intentionally, at least that's what I say. We're going to cut this. Not intentionally. <laughs> I um, you know, yeah, this, this is a good story. Love not it. intentionally, but I guess by accident, I kind of like um, messed him, messed with him real bad at the 2022 Torium Pro. Mm -hmm. Um, he was like in the lead, or he was he was in a qualifying spot or something. He was doing well. I, I can't remember. I don't, I don't even remember this, so mm -hmm. I'm relying on on Bailey retelling it. And um, so I, I don't know if I get like all the the proper inflections right mm. but he was he was talking to ellie about um he was in a good he was in a good spot he was looking really good he was this young gun and ellie was like oh you're doing really well like um you know you're you're in the you're in a qualifying spot or whatever and apparently i was like nearby and i kind of looked over at him and was like yeah for now <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and, he, <laughs> and bailey was looking at me and bailey was like in his mind he was like what the fuck like why would you say dude, that? like <laughs> Yeah, like, and that, like, that's like so, oh no. And then so Bailey started like freaking out. And then apparently, when we were, and not, this is also, I honestly don't remember this. And um, definitely wasn't, if I, I'm sure I said it, 
I'm sure I said that because that's kind of stuff I'd say, but <laughs> not like more just taking the piss, which 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 Bailey and I know now. Like we're, we have good banter now, yeah. but I just think he didn't. I guess he didn't know didn't know me and thought I was like actually having a go at him. And um, later on, we were warming up for that for that clean event. It was like three three cleans, two front squats, one jerk, whatever that yeah, cocktail yeah. event. And um, I apparently like took his bar, like just like came over and just grabbed <laughs> his stuff, or like started warming up and adding weight, or just messing with his warm up. And and he was like got totally psyched out. And I'm sure that it was a, it was a factor, but I can't. I doubt it was all me. But he unfortunately bombed on the next event. He he missed all three of his lifts. And that kind of screwed him for that year. Yeah. And he like he like hated me. He was like that guy was like such a bully. Like he's so mean. Like what an asshole. And uh, and I didn't notice. I thought we were like chill. So when we, when I got to Auckland, I'm like I see him. I see him like in the warm area, and I'm like I didn't really know any of the, like don't don't know many of the New Zealand boys. Yeah. So I just like walk over and just start chatting with him. Yeah. We're just hanging out, and he's like he was real like he was real like didn't give me much at the start. He was probably just like he's this motherfucker. And then um, <laughs> then like, take my bar he said, <laughs> yeah, literally. So I start grabbing his stuff, yeah. and and so literally, he he said to me after the event, he, he's like, it was during that that comp that he started to say to himself, oh, actually, Royce Royce is an alright guy. Like he's actually yeah. not. He's pretty yeah. nice. Like I'm, he must have got the wrong impression. And so then, yeah, we actually became friends there. And then obviously, um, when Smarty and Bailey moved over, we've all been like a bit of a crew. But yeah, yeah, that was that was our um that was our redemption. That was our oh, redemption, how good figuratively <laughs> and literally that was redemption for, for mine and Bailey's relationship. I'm glad you missed um, so that was that was yeah. And I didn't know this. This all happened without my knowledge. Like I just, <laughs> He's blissfully yeah, unaware. Bailey to tell me tell me months later that yeah. that's what was happening. That you um, cost so Bailey that was, that was his game spot. I mean, <laughs> he's he's never brought it up, mate. So I think I think he's over it. He had that Jordan grudge yeah, going yeah. in the background. Yeah, yeah. I think I think uh, yeah. Like coming th- coming twelfth of the games this year definitely uh, probably sued sued that saw. Yeah. So that wound is closed now. Yeah, how good did he do, man? Was so so. Oh uh, yeah, and I yeah. knew he would. I we all, we all like everyone of us around him who was watching him train, like and um, and who, who would just watch his career, even. I remember even watching him at the the twenty one and twenty two pro, being like, "This this kid yeah. is dangerous." Like, and um, he just had to had to fix, I guess, the holes that, that everyone has to fix when you first start competing, which is like the headspace yeah. of like, "I deserve it. I belong here. I can do it." Yeah. It's like um, I can't remember who the original author or quote of this is, but it's that whole like um, so the well known like um, you fear success more than you fear failure sometimes, weirdly, yeah, yeah. and it is like it's this whole like a bit of a complex of like. Do, am I good enough? Like, is it, do I deserve to be that kind of person that like wins this or does that? Mm. And um, yeah, he just, he just kept turning up and kept proving himself to himself, I guess. And um, this year he was just like bulletproof. And even in terms of like, I think he, we all thought he would do really well in the first event and then he, he didn't do bad, but it wasn't mm. like a, it didn't hit a home run there, but it didn't even flap him. He just was like, Oh, well, it wasn't, you know, whatever, come back and just smash the next event. Like he was just, he was just so much more calm and cool and knew the game, I guess. You, not very few people win every event, right? It's, it's the game is just do well enough at everything and smash home runs when you, when you get them like that um, chipper yeah. with the, uh, with the overhead squats was so cool to watch. And um, yeah, I just knew, I knew he could, if he could do that again at the games, and I said to him, the games is even less stress because a, the field is more competitive. So you kind of just naturally know, the pressure's off you a little bit. You're not expected to do well at every event. Mm. And B, there's more events full stop. So there's just more chances to just play like to flatten out the curve and get a better average. Yeah. And he just did exactly that. He just did, did what he could on events that like didn't go his way and didn't get bummed by it mm. and then smashed the ones that were, that were made for him. Yep. And um, and yeah, and did, did so freaking awesome. And then Jay did the same thing. Kind of Jay's progression was the same. Like he'd always crush our region get to the games and maybe just not believe in himself like that he that he that he deserves to be that good and then this year the, the two boys they just like i'm just making an assumption now maybe maybe jay always believed but but this year obviously everyone got to see like they got to prove it that they are that good that yeah. like i've known for a while that they're that good yeah and they got to actually show it off and get the runs on the board so yeah oh yeah the Especially... uh the oceania region's in good hands eh? oh 100 percent um that's like one of the aims that we want to do. We want to put way more spotlight on this side of the world. Um, like especially with Bailey, like we watched him compete in New Zealand for years before he went to Torian and like mm-hmm. he'd dominate all the New Zealand competitions. Is I mean, there's a few other boys as well that if they just knuckled down, like um like Ash Rosendale, like if he just yep. um yeah. knuckled down and had a I I reckon he'd be at the Torian, you know, messing around with the, all the boys. So 
Um, yeah, get out there, boys. Give it a crack. Um, I had a point Definitely. there, but it's gone. <laughs> this happens every episode. <laughs> I'll have something and it just disappears. Yeah, well, we, we were um, chatting with Bailey. And, yeah, but we were um, talking about going to um, oh, Wellington, weren't we? Yeah, we were, but... Oh, sorry, what were you saying about Bailey? Yeah, no, carry on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we were chatting with Bailey and he did say that he did sort of take the pressure off himself and his whole goal was just to go there and enjoy the games because the last time he'd been there, he was a teen. So that was his main motivation. And um, even James Newbery said that his best season, same thing. He was just like, oh, well, I'm here now. I'm just going to enjoy it. Mm. And that seems to be bringing out phenomenal performances. <clears throat> yeah, 100%. It is, it is back to what we just talked about before, that... Um, when you love it, you're probably going to do better. Yeah. Like if you're having fun, like if you're enjoying it, like you remember that, hey, you're here because this is what you want to be doing. Yeah. Um, and so and it was exactly the same for me. And 21 was my best individual season. And my only goal there was to hit every workout without regret. Like, be, like I'd rather, literally the quote, I'd rather burn out than fade away this time. Because in 18, when I was a rookie, I just was so much like too too scared of every event. Like, oh, I've got to, I've got to pace this one. I don't want to, mm. you know, look dumb. And just and just every event, I wished I'd gone a little harder or pushed a bit deeper. And so, twenty one, I was like, I don't even care if it's the wrong strategy to go out like too hot, whatever. I just want to make sure every event, I feel like I really gave it a, a crack. Yeah. And guess what? That translates to way better finishes in every event, and and even like nearly a couple of event wins. So that is that is the secret: is to enjoy it and go after it, mm. and just yeah burn out rather than fade away because no one remembers the person who came 20th. Like it doesn't matter. Like yeah. if you play it safe and come 20th, you're better off going for it and getting cut or yeah. landing in the top 10 because when you're a rookie 20th sounds awesome. But when you, when you go back to the games a few times and you, and your goal is to like do well, yeah. it's 20th through 40th kind of all feels the same. Like yeah. you want to, you want to go better than that or you don't really mind. Well, personally, I'm talking about myself now don't mind if I come 25th or 20th. It kind of feels the same. I'd rather right. punch hard and get into the teens or top 10. That's what I told Bailey. I told yeah. him, like, just just don't regret any workout where you feel like you're going to sit back later and be like, oh, I wish I'd gone a little harder. Even if I died in the ass, maybe I wouldn't have. Mm -hmm. So I should have gone harder. And um, and that's he said that exact thing about that box jump one, the intervals one and two. Yeah, He was hurting. He said he was like so effed off the rower. And he got to the box jumps and he just, he told himself, he's like, don't finish this workout and w and think I could have pushed harder. Yeah. Yeah. Just go hard now. And if I, and if I die in the ass and I proved myself that I didn't have anything more. And he did, he sent those box jumps and he overtook like Lazar and a few other boys and like, yeah, yeah did obviously came third in the workout, <laughs> smashed it. And that's what, that's what everyone forgets. Like the people who, with the very few exceptions, like Pat Bellner in that workout, with very few exceptions where people can, people win a workout effortlessly because it's like written yeah. for them. Yeah. Almost every time someone gets a top five, they're just going so deep in the hole, like yeah. versus everyone else. They're not necessarily any better at the workout. Um, they might be, but most of the time, it's just the one workout they decided to, to give it everything they have. Mm. Once you're at that level, and it so, just comes down to effort. Mm. Yeah, the guys at that, the guys in the top five in, in, in any given event are just hurting more than the next person. They're not necessarily fitter, but mm. but they are because that's part of being fit is, is the mental push. Um, but I think people think like the people who win events, like it's easy for them, but it's actually even harder for them than the guy who comes last, even though he looks more cooked. <laughs> yeah. It's like the people who are winning are, are, are way deeper in the pain cave than anyone yeah. else. Um, with the, with like very few exceptions where it's like, you know, so Velna, that those jump workouts, they are easy for him. He was yeah. having a laugh, you know, but, um, but that's very few and far between. Yeah. Um, or you and Guy going head to head on a max snatch. Yeah, it was fun to watch. <laughs> Weightlifting is awesome because you don't have to hurt. <laughs> yeah, there is <laughs> zero cardio. Crossfit, don't yeah, you know that you're not out of breath. You're not yeah. like your legs aren't burning up. It's just one moment of like you got to have like you know nerves of steel to like yeah. execute in the moment. But at least yeah, when you lift the bar up, you. You don't, you don't have to collapse on the ground in front of the fans and put your head in an ice bucket like <laughs> yeah. you do after a 5K run or something. Yeah. It's, um, <clears throat> yeah. You brought so that 5K up a lot today. <laughs> I, I think <laughs> you don't like running, day. bro. <laughs> yeah, that 5K, I'll never, I'll never live it down. Um, I just had I'll a never, quick I'll question on, um, do, you, do you think we'll ever see a Rich or a Matt Fraser again? Because like, we thought we'd see that with Justin. 
um, then this yeah, year. Yeah, I mean, no, no offense to Justin because he, winning it twice is phenomenal. Yeah, but I I didn't. It's gonna sound so mean. I didn't believe in him to win the third. Yeah, because and, and I don't think anything even necessarily went wrong for him this year, except for just like he was a bit off. He he'd been sick at semifinals. Like I'm not gonna put words in his mouth and and give him excuses or anything, but like, I think you just saw he was a bit off. And I spoke to him at the end of the weekend. I said, Hey man, how, how are you feeling? And he said, yeah. He said, I'm like, I'm okay. I'm obviously disappointed. So yeah, I'm okay. And I'm like, obviously what the goal, the goal's unchanged, I guess back next year to try to win it. And he goes, yeah, hell yeah. Like he was like really fired up, I guess. And like, that's, that's the thing. I think the point with a, with a Matt and a rich, it's not just, it's one thing to be that good, but I think people just don't under, understand truly the emotional and like psychological effort it takes to to be that um, passionate for that many years in a row, mm. because because you you can't just be good enough. You have to be the best yeah. to win it. Do you know what I mean? Like you, even when you read the recaps of the guys in second and third on the podium, and they talk about the events that like I uh, could have you know if I had, if I'd done this differently and gotten 20 more points, it could have been a win. So like, yeah, it, it really is that close the difference mm. sometimes. And so to be the best every year for that many years is takes an untold toll on you. And, and so the short answer is I don't think we'll see another ritual Matt for a, for a long time. Mm. Rich was a once in a lifetime. And then immediately after he retired, Matt, another once in a lifetime after yeah. came along. So, so we've got two lifetimes before we see someone like that again. Now, yeah, we we you know we we're on we're on credit for for phenomenal yeah. athletes, <laughs> and, Tia, and Tia has has used up like all of them. So yeah. there's like no more females ever again. It'll be like Tia. Um, <laughs> and the only person who'll be like Tia is Tia when she comes back and is, yeah. has her second run. Um, another six. So yeah, it's just, she, she's <laughs> yeah. like Jordan. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the only Jordan is another Jordan. Um, she's so, just had her baseball season and then she's back. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So literally, so yeah, like I, I don't think we'll see anyone like Matt and Rich in terms of like the, the mental longevity to yeah. keep winning that many years in a row because I'm sure Justin was physically capable of winning. Yeah. But it didn't happen, you know? So that's, and, and I'm not going to put words in his mouth as to why it didn't happen, but but it didn't. Yeah. And uh, and it's not because he wasn't fit enough. You know what I mean? It's like Justin got real fat this season and like didn't try hard. Mm. Like it's, it's, there's more to it than that. And that's what made Rich and, Matt so special to do what they did. So he he looked mentally checked out, and and I know it's hard. I don't know the guy at all. Never spoken to him, and all I'm going off is two previous seasons, and then this season. Um, I don't know. Just some events, he stood there, and it was like he just almost looked like he didn't want to be there. But I could be completely off the mark there. And and like you said, like you have to be yeah. so mentally on. Like um, was what always cracked me up about Rich Froning is that. He stepped away from individual and he said, oh, you know, I just want to spend more time and not be so mentally involved. And I was like, and then wins what, f another six frigging gold medals. And you're like, you weren't yeah. that mentally checked out, bro. <laughs> like, no, yeah. No, no, he, and, he, and he wasn't. It was, nah. it was just like he said, he was just didn't like individual anymore. Like he's, yeah. a, he's a team sport guy, grew up playing yeah. team sports. And so he just wanted to do team sports again, basically. Mm -hmm. So he just kept going on the team and kept winning because he's the man. But yeah. Um, yeah, it's like it's like just a new new lease on life, I guess. Is and then he even said he tried to do the, he did the age group semi final this year just to see if like mm. if there's any part of him still left that would be like oh individual is you know still and he's like nah he goes it was just nah not there so yeah it's um yeah it's crazy like it's like he's like he even said it I remember like his his like speech at the end of the 2014 games when he said hey guys I'm not retiring I'm just switching gears yeah. And it's true. Like there was no slowing down. It was just he he just didn't want to keep individually. It's just lonely to be an individual, I guess. And yeah. um, he'd proven all he wanted to prove. It was like, what's what's why even like come back next year? Even if he could have won 2015, which is a, a great debate for many analysts, it doesn't matter because he's like, yeah. why? What's what would I prove with that? I'll just go go team. I can still express and prove my fitness on the team mm. as a world class athlete, but have a lot more fun doing it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that that was that was cool. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Just before we, we wrap things up, um, you were obviously on a mayhem team with Chase, Ellie, and oh, I should Kristen, know. Kristen yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew that name. We're coming. Um, yeah. uh, you guys had a great run. You did qualify, eh? But it was a COVID year, wasn't it? Um, That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, was there ever a talk of you jumping on a team 
with Rich at any stage? <clears throat> nah, no, no, never, no. never, never talk. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a, <laughs> I think there's a bit of a like a, a pecking order, an unofficial pecking order of athletes that would like get the call up first and. Um, yeah, there's there there a lot, lot better options than me. <laughs> <laughs> Not the least of which is um, Rich, Rich, almost never. China and Scott are the only exceptions, but but even then, he never, almost never partners with people that aren't going to be like yeah. pretty local. Yeah, yeah, because they, because obviously they're trained to to win the thing. Which um, even this year, as, as we put together our team with with the goal of podiuming or better. It was the same idea. It's like it's it can't be like fly in, fly out. Like team yeah. has to be with the on. And even with China, like this was back when she lived in California, so she was over to Tennessee like a ton. Mm. Um, Scott was in was in Columbus. He was over to Tennessee a ton. Like they were still local enough to get pretty much the kind of training schedule you would get with four people who lived in the area mm. when they all have full time jobs. Because you don't train together every day all the time. Obviously, normally you people have jobs, people have like different schedules, whatever. Mm. But um, yeah, like having an international person on their team, I don't think was ever something Rich was going to consider for for lots of reasons. Logistics being the least of it, financially, like um, it. W- I mean, if Richard offered me the spot, it, I would have found it really hard to say no. But I mean, yeah. it's also insane to try to get over to the states, yeah. like enough yeah. to even try to, you know. Whereas with um, with Chase and and Chris and Ellie. It was, we were still wanting, we still had aspirations of being a good team. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But I think there was a lot less pressure and we could, we could kind of, we could make the, the chemistry was more important than the, um, than the location. Yeah. I watched you guys. And like... we did, we did qualify. You know, we, um, we had, a, we had a great run. That was like a very, that was a very underrated team in terms of like, at the time, none of us were particularly star power, but man, we had, we had a good like, um, dynamic with our strengths and weaknesses and, uh, yeah. yeah, we we qualified the spot out of Waterpalooza that year, so pretty competitive. Yeah. It was pretty awesome. You did a few comps. So I, I watched you at Broad Beach that year. Um, yep. Yeah. yeah. So it was pretty cool to watch. And yeah, like I said, underrated as like I mean, you guys are out there, and even like you can't even write off Chase. Like when he he was on a, a winning team with Rich, like dude's fit man. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. When so when Richard when they kind of announced that. Uh, people like uh, like uh, people I knew here in Australia, people were like, oh, who, who is this guy? Like, oh, is this is this team gonna be any good? Mm. And I was like, guys, trust me, Chase is the freaking man. Get him on a like, machine. There's literally hey. only one thing he's like not good at, which is just specifically heavy barbells. Yeah. Like if you have like a, a two twenty five or you know for the metrics one hundred and two kilo snatch like for reps in workouts. Yeah, he's gonna move slower than a lot of the top guys, but mm. everything else, he's a freak. Like, and, and as you saw in the games, when they just won like e- like every workout, yeah. like six workouts <laughs> in a row, and they actually won the back squat because there was enough heavy hitters on, with between their girls to make up to make up the difference for Chase anyway. Yeah. So they like, yeah, it was it, that was I knew when Chase on that team that it would be a phenomenal team. Yeah, like him on a like a rower or a ski, because he's not like a big dude traditionally, big dude. And like the numbers he's putting on those machines, you're like, oh man, this guy moves. Yeah, yeah. What what he what he lacks for in strength, he makes up for in in his fitness mm. with in everything except the barbell. Obviously, you can't you can't fake the strength of the barbell. But like, yeah, we be if we do road workouts together, I'm a big dude. I'm pretty powerful. I'm pulling big numbers, sitting at like you know 80, 85 percent effort. And Chase will just pull the same number. It's like ninety five percent effort for him, but yeah. he'll just he's got an engine that can just go all yeah. day. So he'll just sit there until the he'll just be at ninety five percent until the workout's done. He just yeah. gets the job done. So yeah, it was awesome being on a team with him, and I knew I knew that Mayhem, like Freedom, were in good hands with with Chase. I knew they were yeah. going to win. That's good. But um, you got anything else to add? Yeah, I think um, um, yeah. So definitely lock in a team for next year, bro. Okay, new new venue. <laughs> okay, <laughs> if you need someone. <laughs> won't be me now um <laughs> new venue which is going to be cool It'll be exciting hopefully yeah, we get to see you individual team whatever that looks like be good to see you thrown down there but um we did say at the top we wanted a workout we've been doing it every episode uh yeah man i don't know i hate it when you get a really really fit guy on here and you ask for a workout <laughs> <laughs> and they tell us it's real easy oh yeah, this one this jake one's not douglas too bad. was like oh this one's not too bad and it was like this 40 minute emom and oh my god <laughs> 550 <laughs> watt <laughs> anyway salt bike um so what anything was, off a training was, piece or you can... last 
What was, what, what was the last work that you got from, from um, Marty and Bailey? Are they the last guys you had on? Well, yeah, we didn't actually get one off that. That was um, supposed okay. to be a bonus episode because we did it in uh, I'm good, sir. with with the Cluster Boys Live, and that. Yeah. yeah. Um, the last one we had so, was from Brianna Clark. We had a she's in she plays with the Broncos, um, yeah. and she gave us a Bronco, Bronco test. So no running today, bro. <laughs> okay. Right, let's let's get something. We'll get something short then. Okay. Something short up. Well, I was about to say one thing, but then when you guys were talking about people like saying it's easy when it's really not, um, <laughs> just whatever, bro. Honestly, <laughs> I'll tell you what. Before we get into that, I when I came over to watch that Broad Beach competition, my sister lives in Brisbane, um, so we went to Brisbane, and I might be getting the year wrong, but you were coaching at Torian, and I did a class there, and it was in pairs or in threes. 150 dumbbell bench every break was i want to say 14 dumbbell snatch synchronized nice yeah <laughs> i've repeated that workout heaps i like that one man it was a really good one it's a good one yeah yeah, yeah. a good one yeah but anyway sorry um, carry on. <clears throat> all right well i just think i'm just just the sign on the rep scheme love these ones off the cuff newbury did the same <clears throat> yeah i just need to We'll go short. We'll go short. We'll, we'll, we'll keep this one quote unquote easy. <laughs> so we'll go 2159, classic CrossFit. We'll go 2159. Yep. We'll go biker calories. Yep. Warbles, mm -hmm. normal warbles, 20 pounds, 10 foot. Yep. And then toast the bar. Okay. All right. A little mm -hmm. bit, a little bit of legs, a little bit of leg press, and then a little bit of core. That's a um, warble toast bar combo. If anyone out there doesn't know, is pretty gnarly. It's a good little yeah, combo. It's a, I'll give you I'll give you a little I'll give you a little strategy brief for it too. Yeah. So we'll hit the uh hit the warbles unbroken, that should be the goal. Yeah. Just make yourself make yourself go unbroken. Toe to bar, if you really go toe to bar, go unbroken if if they're like an easy movement. But the smart play there would just be really quick breaks. Don't don't waste too much time. And then use the bike as a little bit of recovery. Don't push too hard on the bike. Yeah. Try to try to get those legs back and then push the wall ball, push the toe to bar. Yeah. What would you be holding on the calorie split as a recovery bike <laughs> for Mr. Roy's <laughs> well, done? <laughs> because toe to bars are like literally my best movement. Right. Uh, they're probably tied with handstand walk. So I actually wouldn't use the bike as recovery. I'd, okay. I'd use the toe to bars recovery <laughs> and I'd be sending the bike. Right. So I'd probably, I'd be trying to hold like, I'd be trying to hold like 1600, Okay. Cows per hour, yeah. <laughs> unbroken war balls because you can't really do them any faster anyway. Yeah, and then yeah. unbroken toe to bar. Yeah, very good. Okay. Yeah, I think it's it's a it's like a five minute workout, but I think if if anyone if you guys can get under eight, I think that's a really good effort. Yeah. As if you if you're an hour a day crossfitter and you like I said hold the war balls unbroken, just just smart on the bike and break the toe to bar a lot, but for a short amount of time, you know, like do eight drop breathe and get up again that kind of thing yeah then i think sub eight is is very is very is a good really good push right no, that's good. good well we, i i program these workouts at my affiliate um every week as well so um that's good bit of programming advice bit of um pacing advice yeah you can use that as like a like a part b or part c metcon after maybe a bit of bit of strength or something yeah yeah we just started the strength block so how yeah, good. If you have like a, a squat day, it'll be a good one because it's like not extra 45, um, like the 45 wall balls, like an extra 45 squats, acts as a bit of a drop set. And then, um, and also they'll be, they'll be nice and warm from their squat to like hit those wall balls really smoothly. Yeah. How good. There you go. She's got a whole session programmed <laughs> by Royce Dunn. <laughs> <laughs> Make my job go. easier. Um, anything you want to add, bro? No, man. Just, uh, just a huge thank you for coming on. Is, is there anybody you want to shout out? Any sponsors? Any family? um hustle hustle mate um uh, I mean, all my all my all my sponsors and all my all my stuff is all my instagram just if anyone wants to yeah check out anything uh, most of what we do like um i'm a train with christy pretty much every day mm -hmm. all pretty much mm -hmm. all of our training is documented on my instagram in one way or another um i've got like a link tree on there with with discount codes and anything that people want um any questions about like kind of the gear we use i guess like what grips we use that kind of stuff just people can dm me on instagram or um you won't scroll very far, I reckon, to, to see a post where we're using some of it. So everything we we are sponsored by or like believe in, we use every day, literally. So if you mm. see us using it, that's that's the brand we prefer. How good, man! Hey, 
Thank so. you so much. It was a bit of logistics getting this one done, but uh, yeah, the yeah. camera's just died <laughs> right too. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Don't be on the first, on the first attempt, but it's yeah, or the there. second. <laughs> it was funny. We locked it in, and when we locked in Tuesday. <laughs> Beef was like, bro, I have to go to work. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> it was like, literally, you said yes. And then his boss texts him like half an hour later and he's like, oh, I was like, oh, well. uh, uh, yeah. I, I read your message and then about half an hour later, I got another message and was like, bro, I need you to text Royce. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, we got the you, owe me, you owe me one. <laughs> yeah. You owe me one after I, after I left you guys hanging. We're going to try and tee up with you and wellington if we make it down there hmm. we'll um we'll be putting a microphone in your face don't you worry <laughs> yeah that'd be that'd be sick we'll get like a little um we'll get me bailey and noobs nice. yep. together yeah uh, we'll, if we yeah, are we going we really, really get the banter flowing yeah we'll get a q a going we'll, we'll, we'll sort it out man <laughs> you are the absolute man royce dunn thank you so much for coming on enjoy the rest of your day yeah cheers mate thank you my absolute pleasure thanks boys right, see All you right. bro we'll catch you bye